Hello. Some people commented that the last tutorial I did was kind of too fast and they couldn't follow it very well. So I'm making this tutorial showing the basics of Maya so they can learn the basics on this video and then go to the other videos where I explain things faster. So I can keep those videos concise and I'll explain it better here. So that's it, this is a video about the Maya basics and let's get started. First off, let's set up the Unity grid. Click over here on the script editor, copy the script over, I'm linking it down in the description on GitHub. Select the script and needle mouse drag to the shelf. From there you can click on the shelf icon and set the grid to meters. Now we have a Unity grid. Okay, so Alt and left click is rotation. Alt middle click is movement. Alt right click is zoom. Okay, let's create a cube. W is the move tool. You can middle click and mouse anywhere to move. Or you can go into left click in the, the arrows or little squares to move on that axis specifically. Alt B, you can change the background color. Yeah, with D, we can change the pivot. You can see there, like now it's rotating from the pivot. With X, you can snap to the grid. So you're gonna snap that pivot into the grid. That's very useful. With D and V together, you can snap the pivots to vertices. V is snap to vertices and D is pivot. So you can see you can easily put the pivot into any vertice. You can also do that with X to snap the pivot to the grid. D and X together, you can snap the pivot to the grid. Okay, with V, you can also snap vertices into other vertices. That's useful to close gaps between modular objects. You can just select the vertice, press V and middle mouse together, and go to another vertice. By using V while clicking on a specific arrow, you can snap the vertice only on that axis. I use that to get my pivot down the center. I go into Modify, Center Pivot. Then I use D and X only on the Y axis and move it down to the bottom. With the pivot down in the center, you have now an object that you can just snap with X around on the grid that's great for modular assets. In input, you can select any of the channels and just middle mouse drag on the viewport to change the values or you can change it manually by inputting numbers there. That way you can get some edge loops to work with. Or you can go into insert edge loop tool and just click and drag to insert a new edge loop. Another thing I want to show off is the modeling toolkit. It has some useful things. Like here you can click multi cut and just click on each place you want to cut in. Then press enter and you'll have the new topology there. The modeling toolkit also gives us some ways of selecting what we want to select. So this is vertices, this is edges, this is faces. Or you can click multi-component and just select wherever it's highlighted. I don't quite like to work like that, but that's there if you want to. What I like to do is to use the marquee menu with the right click and just pick from there what I want. So now edges faces. To me it's an easy and fast way to use it. Once you know where everything is, it kind of becomes muscle memory. Uh, now selection. You can click and drag to select, shift click and drag to invert selection, control drag to remove from selection, or control shift drag to add to selection. Just practice those a little bit until you get it. This is really important. Okay, let's create a new shelf. Click over here, a new shelf, let's put a shelf name. Now I'm going to show you some of the tools I use the most. Go into Edit Mesh, Ctrl Shift Click, Let Edge Vertex and Extrude over in the shelf. Now let's go over to Mesh Tools and get Merge Vertex Tool, Insert Edge Loop Tool and Append to Polygon Tool. Now we're all on our shelf with Click, Shift, Ctrl, Shift and Click. Insert Edge Loop tool I already showed you guys, you can click here and click and drag to add edge loops. You can click an edge and click on Delete Edge to remove that edge. 
you can use this merge vertex tool, click in one vertex and drag to another to merge them. I use that a lot, so you might as well get comfortable with it. Just experiment around with it and you'll get it. Now let's make a cut there so we can have two separate faces to extrude from. I'd like to talk to you about the extrude tool here. You can click and drag to extrude there, you can move things around, but right now I'm moving locally. You can click on the little square so you can turn that into the scale. And now with the little click there, I turned it to world position. So it's scaling from the middle there. You see the difference when I scale from local than when I move and scale from the middle. And that's pretty much the extrude tool. That's what you need to know. I'm going to delete some vertex here, some faces, to show you guys that pants polygon tool. Now I have that thing open and I want to close it. So I'm going to go into a pen tool and click, click, pen. You can click G key to repeat the last tool used. So that's what I'm doing right now. And now I close those gaps. Right, so those are the tools I wanted to show you guys. So if you press W and click, you can cho choose between world or object mode. You can see right now I'm in world mode, but I'm going to turn to object and I can move based on the rotation of that object. You see, that's quite useful. Go back to world and now you can move based on the world orientation. You can also do that with E for the rotation. You can see now I'm rotating locally instead of in world mode. Now I'm gonna change the world. You can see the difference there. E and click or W and click or R and in object mode, you can use Ctrl D to quickly duplicate objects. You can use this to isolate the object, this to make the object transparent, this to see the wireframe mode over the objects, and this here to turn into wireframe and back. Those buttons are on the top of the viewport. Uh, let's combine those two together, so go to Mesh, Combine, and let's connect those. I'm just gonna delete those faces there in the middle. I could either append to Polygon tool to make another edge there, edge loop there, or I could just merge vertex, this is the merge vertex tool, and that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, another thing, uh, let's assign new material here, I'm going to show you something about materials and UVs. So I added a new Pong, I can change the color here and just add any color I want, or I can click on that little square there, go into File and pick a file for my texture. i just put this video tutorials file here, and yep, it's there. Okay, let's go in flat lighting so I can only see the texture and no shading at all. Let's go into here and place 2D texture and change the UV repeating. I would do that if it's a floor that I want repeating and looping. You can see where it is. There are file, there's place 2D texture and you can change it there. Okay, let's go into the UV texture editor. There are four things here I'd like to click. This to see if the UV is facing forward or not. This for the cuts. You can also click this to have a checkerboard to easier see the UV spread. Now let's click Edge, click this to cut the edge. Let's, let's separate that top part there. I'll be clicking on that so I can separate this square out of the rest of the UVs. Let's select this square. Right click and select UV to move only the UVs. You can control right click to select to shell. This will select the roll shell. And you can move with middle click, but that's not what I wanted. I selected the wrong one. Let's try again. Right click, control right click to shell, and now we can middle mouse and move just how we use other things. You can also use the right click to select edge or vertex or UV there. Another thing I can, can show you is uh, using J while rotating, so you can rotate from like 15 to 15 degrees. So it's more precise. Okay, 
Okay, one last thing I'd like to show is if I select a face or edges there, I can control, right click to UV and I'll select the UVs just by doing that. That's an easier way of selecting. Okay, now well, let's do something with this and certain edge loop there. I like to remove the left side and work with only one side. I'll extrude some sort of head from here or chest or something. I'm just gonna show how to do something with this knowledge we just acquired and I'll show a few more tricks along the way. I'm just using the extrusion tool here to extrude one side of the head. Usually I like to work with one on one side if the character is going to be symmetrical or the thing I'm going to do is going to be symmetrical. Um, maybe you should add some edge loops here to the side. So we can pull the body out a little bit more I guess. It's not going to be a full-fledged character, I want to keep this short and simple, but it's going to be something. Okay, we have uh, some topology there, we can extrude some sort of arm from it. Okay, so far I'm only using extrusion and Insert edge loop. I'm gonna rotate this around. I can double click to select the whole edge loop there. Just rotate it around. I'm selecting the vertexes, rotating it around. Uh, let's extrude some legs or something from here. Okay. You see, I have an opening there around the leg area. I have to close that later. For now, let's just extrude out. And I can use X to snap to grid, so his feet will be touching the ground. Let's round off this vertex a little bit. Yep. Okay. Now I want to mirror this to the other side, but first let's fix that gap there. Oh, this part is closed off. Let's delete this. Yep. It's better. Let's close off this gap here with a pen to the polygon. Yep, it's closed. Now one more thing. To mirror geometry, we need to make sure everything is in the same line. And right now I don't think it is, so let's go to front view. You can use space and click the front view. Okay, now let's say our vertices are all unaligned like that. We can't mirror geometry like that, it's not gonna work. Okay, let's select all the vertices that should be in the middle. And double click over here to go into the move tool settings. And make sure retain component spacing is turned off, otherwise that will happen. Now that's turned off, you can just X, click and drag there, and it will be in the middle. Uh, it won't work if it's in object mode. Let me show you. If it's in object mode, it's just keep spacing. It will ignore whatever you're trying to do, so be sure you're in world mode when you do that. Okay, back to perspective, let's do a mirror geometry. Right now, uh, our geometry is facing forward X, so we want to mirror it to minus X. I don't even know what I'm doing right now. Uh, mesh, mirror geometry, and minus X. Mirror. Yep. Uh, you can see there's an ugly hard line in the middle there. To fix that, can you see that there? We're gonna double click that edge loop, go into normals, and soften edge. Now we have a nice soft edge there. And that's it, that's our basics of Maya. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Uh, I'll be posting a new one on Tuesday. I hope you can follow it better now that you got the basics done. See ya!